do have an OSH law. There are requirements in the safety and health law. And it is very um, fitting that when it is not that when ILO cons is now putting safety and health as one of the fundamental principle and rights at work we also have the safety and health law so it assures us that in any work we do we have the necessary programs the services and our workplaces should be should uh, there, there are working condition will ensure that we will not suffer from any accident, injury, or illness because of work. Anong kahalagahan kaya ng occupational safety and health sa mga SMEs? Hindi natin maisasantabi ang kahalagahan ng uh, OSH or Occupational Safety and Health sa mga malilit na negosyo tulad ng kinaluluban namin mga micro, small, and medium enterprises dahil dito nakasalalay ang pag-angat ng negosyo, paglago, pag-improve uh, ng yung tinatawag nating productivity at uh, efficiency, effectiveness ng ating mga manggagawa. Hi mga ka -Eco. this is Rex Del Rosario, your correspondent. And this is Echo Plus, Amplifying Your Voice 2.0. And now, for our next guest, Mr. Bent Horn Andersen. He is the advisor in Occupational Safety and Health ng Confederation in Danish Industry. Hi, Mr. Andersen. How are you today? Oh, I'm fine. I'm glad to know that you're doing okay. And for our first question, what is the state of Occupational Safety and Health compliance in Denmark among micro, small, medium enterprises? Oh yeah, thank you for the question. and. I'm very glad that you have invited me for, for this uh, dialogue on, on, on answering uh, these questions because I believe that although we have rich countries, we have poor countries, we have big countries, we have small countries, we're all struggling with more or less the same problems within uh, the OSH occupational health and safety matters. But to introduce myself, you already done it. My name is uh, Ben Horn Andersen and uh, I'm working for the Danish Confederation of, uh, of or oh, it's called Confederation of Danish Industries. We are the biggest industry organization in Denmark. We have 19,000 members. Uh, companies in our organization and uh, here I'm, I'm head of our OSH department. We are about 20 people working with OSH matters here in the organization and what we're doing is first of all we are a tri dialogue system in Denmark so when we set up new reg legislation in the, in the ministry uh, the minister asks the social partners uh, for the opinion and we go there together with the unions to find out how should the legislation be. Then we give advice to our member companies. We can ask questions. We can claim on behalf of our members to the authorities if they have had a visit by, by the authority and do not feel well treated or believe that the authorities are wrong, then we can help them complain. But our main task is to be a link between the authorities and the companies to inform them about the legislation on OSH. Uh, so we can work on improving the OSH uh, situation all the time. And then you ask about the state of OSH compliance in Denmark. And well, I mentioned uh, definitely Denmark is a much richer country compared to the Philippines. We are also a smaller country. We, we are only 6 million people here uh, compared to I believe you're about 110 million uh, in, in the Philippines. And uh, we are highly industrialized, but still, although we have so much focus on the OSH, we still have uh, fatalities, we still have accidents, we still have work-related diseases in Denmark, quite a lot actually. We have about 45,000 recorded work-related accidents per year, and among those is 30, 40 fatalities. And it's still, the, I'm sure it's the same kind of uh, accidents we have here, we're facing here compared to the Philippines. It's fall from the highest, it's uh, from the construction sites where people fall down from the scaffolding. 
It is strain uh, because they're falling, it, people get uh, stuck on the workplace. So I'm sure that you will, you're facing the same kind of accidents in the Philippines. And still we have 45,000 per year, so it's quite a lot. But what we're using, uh, doing is actually to when each time a company has an accident, they are required to investigate the accident to see how can they prevent it in the future. So each accident is considered one accident too much. We have also about uh, 20,000 uh, diseases, work-related diseases per year. That, that is mainly muscular skeleton diseases, it's skin diseases, it, uh, also mental uh, illness like stress we have many uh, recorded uh, incidents and it all gives rise to investigation and uh, trying to prevent further cases in the future and the reason is uh, for that is that we are lacking uh, qualified uh, labor force in Denmark so the labor force is our main resource and, and the companies want to keep them safe and healthy and also want to keep keep people at the workplace because they are uh, competing uh, competing uh, on the labor force with the neighboring company. So what they can do is they can offer them a good uh, OSH situation to attract a labor force. That is a very, very important uh, issue. Besides that, it's very costly. A good yes. OSH uh, situation is a very, very good business case. What we can see is that for the employer, if you have an accident with uh, absence from, from work, you still need to have pay for, for the salary for the employee who's uh, had had an accident. You need to pay for the insurance. If you have many accidents, the insurance will increase. You need to recruit new labor force, and that is very uh, costly. And, and you need to train them. So what we can see is that for each accident where people are away from the job for more than 30 days, it, the average cost will be 8,000 US dollars for, for the company. So that's quite a lot of money. So just due to that, it's a good business case to keep uh, your employees healthy and uh, they feel good at the company. For the society, for, for the government, it's also very costly if uh, people are accidents or diseases because they need to pay a sickness uh, benefit. They need to pay for the hospitals, uh, the, the whole health system, and uh, they have a loss of uh, tax from the employees. So altogether in Denmark, that's we have counted, that would be about 100 million uh, US dollars per year. 100 million US dollars, quite a lot of money for a country with only 6 million inhabitants. So altogether, it's a damn good uh, business case to have a healthy workforce and uh, to give priority to uh, the OSH. So, if uh, the employer uh, look at uh, why should they invest in, in us, well, the manager has the responsibility of uh, the us, and uh, it's a question of higher well-being uh, of the employers, and it's a good business case. And the companies, they will achieve safer working condition, high engagement and well-being, less staff turnover, and better productive performance and corresponding uh, positive effects. So. What do we do to reduce the number of accidents and diseases? Well, to be honest, it all starts uh, with the manager. I'm right now looking at the picture where we have the employees, they have, they have, they're full equipped with safety uh, goggles and shoes and uh, respiratory masks uh, to protect themselves. And just next to the workers, you have the employer standing without any protection gear at all. So for us, it's very important that it comes from the manager, that the company think, believe that us is an important. So if the company says to the, to the employees, you should wear safety shoes, you should wear goggles, you should wear respiratory protection gear, then it's so important that the, the manager is not just going into the production side uh, without uh, using the gear himself. So it all starts with the manager. If the manager doesn't show that he means this serious, then it will not go down to the employees. So that's, that's a very, very important uh, message that the manager should take it serious and show that he means it. This also means that 
if the employees do not follow the, the rules at the workplace to wear the safety gear, then uh, it's, it's up to the manager to show that he means it seriously and uh, in the end say, well, we cannot have you here at, at this company because your colleagues, they look at you, they can see you're not using the safety gear. So why should they do the safety gear? So it's really a matter of showing that the management means this seriously. So what is characteristic for a good collaborative relationship between employees and overall management is that the employees experience a strong relation to the workplace. The employees and overall management have common understanding how to perform the task and the overall management involves in employees in decisions which involve changes. That's the last thing is much part of the Danish regulation that there should be involvement from the employees. The idea is that while although the manager takes responsibility for his employees, then quite often if the manager is not aware of the problems uh, that the employees are facing, so uh, if you involve the employees, they might have good ideas how to reduce the noise level or how to reduce the risk situation for accidents or they have, might have good ideas for improving your production. So the message is involve the, the employees. It's not the same as you are a weak manager. It shows that you're a responsible manager. If you are open-minded, say, well, okay, I know a lot. I can take decision, but do you have good ideas how we can improve the situation? Then I can take the decision. So that is very, very important. What we use in our work in Denmark, we use the so-called Bradley Curve. I can recommend Google it or whatever. The Bradley Curve is showing a connection between a number of uh, injuries and the responsibility of the employees. So you could say if your employees, so what we call reactive, they only follow the rules because they have to, it is said that you should do like this and this and this, and then they do this and this and this, where the, the safety here, then you might have quite a lot of injuries. But the number of injuries will decrease if the employees get different attitudes to safety. And that could be, in the end, Yes, you could say that instead of only following the rules because they have to, then if they follow the rules because they want to, because they have an understanding that it's the best for, for me as an employee, but not only for me myself, but also for my colleagues. So you also take responsibility for your colleagues. And that's what we're working on all the time, that safety matters is not only a question of the management saying you should do like this and this, it is also a responsibility from the employees to look after themselves, first of all, but also look after their colleagues. It's okay in, in Denmark to say to your colleagues, uh, why are you not wearing the safety helmet? Because it shows that you care about your colleagues and it gives a better understanding at the company in general. So that's called the Bradley Curve. It's so important in the, the way of thinking at the company to improve the, the safety situation. So what else do we do to improve the situation? Well, as, a, as an organization, uh, we work very closely together with the unions. And that is quite important because if we have a common understanding with the unions about the uh, rules on, on, on OSH, then it's much easier to go out to the companies together uh, to say, well, we have a common understanding that the situation should be like this and this and this. So when our member companies, well, it's, it's difficult, but sometimes our member companies come and say, well, this doesn't make sense and it's too expensive to buy uh, safety shoes or helmets or whatever. Then we have we could be in a situation to say, well, we know it's expensive, but you have to follow the rules. And because we have an agreement with the unions that for this work, it is important and necessary to use safety shoes or safety helmets or whatever. So 
often we actually visit our, our company, member companies together with the unions so we can have this common understanding uh, about the situation on the companies. So in general our companies are very open-minded to invite both unions and, and us as an, an employer's organization into the companies to show, be open about their problems but also open about solutions so we can learn from one company a uh, solution which we can uh, give further to other companies say well we know that you can solve this problem in this and this way then it's very important to give the the right information uh, to the right company this meaning that we have a highly uh, qualified uh, industry we have the pharmaceutical industry we produce windmills highly technical uh, uh, gear and there they might have their own OSH uh, department and they can prepare their own information and uh, give the information uh, further to their employees but most of our member companies are as in the Philippines they are micro uh, companies or small companies with very few employees and no OSH department, no uh, OSH expert. So it's important for us to elaborate information materials in a very, very simple way to give to our uh, member companies. And that we do again together with the unions so we can be we can agree on the content of the information uh, materials it could also be a catalog of uh, best practices examples uh, to show that well in the uh, construction uh, industry you can solve the problems in this and this way remember to do this and this a scaffold B should be secured in this way we also make uh, tools for organizing the us work that could be uh, for doing risk assessment at the workplace and so on and now i think i'm ready for the next question from you and as a follow-up question what can filipino micro small medium enterprise learn from danish experience in terms of osh compliance and programs yes so what can you learn from the from the Danish experiences? As I mentioned in the beginning, then I believe that all the countries in the world are facing more or less the same problems. You might be a more rich country, you might have more resources to put into the us uh, work, but in the end, we are facing the same kind of accidents and injuries that still people are falling down from the scaffolding that still people are cut with knives and get hurt at the, 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 the companies. So I believe we have much to learn from each other. And in the same way, I'm, we're trying to learn from our neighboring countries that could be Sweden or the Netherlands or Germany or UK or US. We look into what are they doing there. And I've been working in quite many different countries. I've with us problems. Uh, lately I've been in Jordan in the Middle East, I've been working in Egypt and I believe without being in, in the Philippines I could imagine that they are, they are struggling with the same problems as you are in the Philippines. And also there the employers they have the the ambition to do the, the best for, for their employees to, to look after them and, and keep them healthy. So in that sense we are in the same situation all over the world. But what I also am facing is that uh, it is common that companies need tools to help to tackle the challenges in, within us. But also understanding uh, the single manager or employer to understand that both the company and the employees benefit from an improvement of uh, a better OSH situation. It's not only uh, because of the cost and, and the good the business case, but because mo most employee, employer, both in Denmark and the Philippines, they want to do the best for the employees. They want to keep them healthy uh, because they know that uh, it gives it more production, better production and to improve the production. Uh, so they want to do the best, but they don't know how to do it. That, and and that, that's a problem both in Denmark and the Philippines, I could imagine. The question is, so how do we 
make the employers recognize that they need to do something or to give them tools to use the single company to improve it. An understanding is that uh, everybody should take responsibility. I mentioned that before, but it's very, very important that uh, the employer make the employees understand that they should also take a responsibility, not only for themselves, but also for the colleagues, because we have to increase the situation all together. So it's not one for all, it's also all for one. That we work together and together we can improve the situation. It's much more easy. I know we have different traditions that uh, in many countries, probably also in the Philippines, a good manager is a manager who can take the decision saying, you should do like this and this and this. While we have a more freely kind of management in Denmark, where it's, it's okay to you as an employee to inform your manager about Give, I have an idea, we could improve the situation, This. why don't we do this and this and this. I believe that we have a risk of uh, accidents in this part department of the company, so couldn't we do something with that. It's My main message is that you should have a dialogue at the company level. In Denmark, our tool is that uh, it is required for the single company to make a workplace risk uh, assessment and it should be made regularly. That means once a year or once second each second year. So it sounds, if you are a micro company or enterprise, it could sound very uh, academic or difficult to, uh, if you ask them to make a risk assessment, workplace risk assessment. But it, actually, it's not that difficult. If you, if you are a big company, you might have your own system, your own us department who can do it and make questionnaire to your employees and go around and identify problems in the production side. But if you are a micro workplace, it is actually that once a year, most of the place, I believe in the Philippines, you also have a requirement for a setting up a safety committee at the company. So if you take the safety committees, take a tour around in the, the enterprise and uh, ask people, look at how are the economic conditions. You can say, do we have heavy lift? Can we do something to reduce the heavy lift? Uh, do, do we have some tools to, to reduce it or we, could we do it a different way? But to identify the uh, the challenges or the problems you have in the company that might be heavy lift uh, or it uh, might be noise, it might be uh, exposure to chemicals, it might be uh, risk of uh, accidents because uh, it's a mess uh, all over that people are falling on the ground. Uh, so take a tour around and uh, you, you could have this questionnaire looking at the chemicals, uh, noise, economics and say, well, do we have challenges here? That's the first thing. And then discuss this in the safety committee. We have identified challenges with noise or with accidents. We have many accidents here at the company. Does anybody have ideas of how we can reduce those uh, risks? That's a workplace uh, risk as assessment. It's it, it not a very academic exercise. You could go around with paper, only with the headlines. Let's have a look at it. Let's ask people, what do you think? Do we have, uh, are we facing problems? Do we have any ideas of how to reduce the risk? So at least it makes sense to involve the employees because as a manager, you might not see how the single employee, if they have a heavy load, uh, to lift or if they the certain uh, situation have a high level of noise uh, or whatever so so involvement by the employees is a good idea and and that's my main recommendation for you to do that's my answer to your second question and for our last question we all know that micro small and medium enterprises are companies with limited resources and manpower. How can MSMEs promote cooperation in workplace when it comes to OSH? 
Thank you for the question. Again, a very, very good question. And if I have a single answer to that, could be uh, become a millionaire because there's no single uh, answer to that. I believe all over you have small companies, micro companies really struggling with the uh, financial situation. And and right now we are facing a a global finance uh, crisis. So what could the single company uh, do? Promote uh, cooperation to improve the situation. I believe that what is needed is simple tools for the the single company. So they they are not inventing a new tool themselves, but they will have some tools already invented by other countries or international organization. And I believe that here the industry organization and the unions have a role to distribute material to their member companies. So uh, in- instead of uh, developing new materials uh, themselves, uh, I can recommend to look into the international organization and find tools there. In Europe, we have the European Agency for Safety and Health at work, which offers uh, tools for risk assessment and information materials for the member companies in Europe. So we have this a central place so that we can learn from each other. So although Denmark is a rather rich country, we also have uh, members in the EU which are not that rich. You could say that uh, Romania and Bulgaria, they, they don't have the same resources to, to develop information materials and tools and so on. So therefore we have a central agency. I don't know how it is in the Philippines that you have a central research agency which could uh, develop information materials or you have the authorities who can do that or you as an uh, organization have financial support to to uh, to develop tools if you don't i can highly recommend that uh, the international labor organization ilo has made a lot of very very good information materials which is meant for small and micro companies all over the world if you look at tools to how to organize it at the, the workplace Then I believe that the so-called concept called the Vision Zero, it is uh, is developed by the SSISSA, the International Social Security Association, uh, and is supported by ILO. And I'm sure that uh, perhaps uh, ECOP can put a link on your website or I can send you a some information about it, but they have developed this tool for organizing the the OSH work at the single companies. It is promoted in a way so you can both use it in poor countries, on rich countries, or you can use it on big companies or in micro companies or enterprises. So it's for everybody. It's a very flexible approach and it has focus on health and safety uh, or well-being actually, depending on what is most relevant at the workplace. It contains so-called seven golden rules and it is seven golden rules that you could use at the workplace to discuss it's it's i can read the the seven golden rules up for you because it is focus point which you can look at at the single company and it's number one the rule is take leadership it's meant for for the employer Uh, demonstrate commitment number two is identify hazards and control the risk that's uh, the workplace risk assessment you can do there. Define targets. So what do you want to achieve with your work? Do I have any ideas and set up a time limit? Do we have the financial situation so that we can do it this year or should we postpone the development for next year's program at the company? Then you should, number four is ensure a safe and healthy system, be well organized at the company. Again, involvement by the employees is so important. Set up your safety committees, give the, give the employees responsibility. Show them that although you are a manager, you have the responsibility, but you expect the employees to look after themselves as well and follow the, the rules you have set up, but also look, uh, take responsibility for their colleagues that they are behaving in the right way and following the rules. Then rule number five is 
ensure safety and health in machines, equipment and workplaces. Look, do you have any risk of uh, accidents that you can prevent? Do you have open machines? Could you lock it in uh, or close it so that you cannot get your fingers into it? Can you set up rules for, for maintaining the machines so you cannot get hurt? Then rule number six is improve the qualification, develop competence. That means that the employees should be trained how to behave and how to follow the OSH rules at the company. What we do in Denmark is uh, actually once a year, once a week, once a month, it's different from company to company. They have a morning session, five minutes, 10 minutes, uh, that where they discuss your production that next week we should produce this and this. And at the same time, they ask people, are you aware of uh, how to behave or how to pre prevent uh, any risk and uh, what kind of safety equipment you should use? So just remember the employees to be aware of uh, how we expect you to work at this uh, at our company. Then rule number seven is invest in people. That's meaning uh, motivate by participation. Again, it's a question of involvement of the employees. Have a dialogue between the manager and the employees. How can we tackle this situation? It gives motivation to the employees and it will definitely raise uh, the, uh, the safety uh, uh, awareness at the company. The uh, seven rules is not only headlines. If you go into the uh, the web, you will see that there are questionnaires which uh, open give more questions uh, underneath each of the seven golden rules. So what I can see here is that, for example, rule number one, taking leadership, safety, health, and well-being are matter for the boss. Then the the the, uh, the manager can ask himself and and rate himself: Am I responsible for my employees and my for myself? And then he can rate himself yes no in the middle a little bit i motivate and exemplify others to work safely and healthy yes no uh, i could be better i question unsafe and unhealthy behavior and make it uh, an issue i give priority in my actions to safety health and well-being i follow the rules consistently being aware that i am the role model for my workers I stop unsafe and unhealthy action at once. I request from all my clients safe and healthy basic condition in order to deliver uh, my services. That is question uh, the employer can ask himself uh, underneath uh, each of the seven golden rules. What is interesting often is that if the employer has a good relation to the safety committee and the employees, then the employees could be asked to fulfill the questionnaire and then it will be interesting to see if they have the same kind of, or they view it view at it in the same way as the employer so when the employer has the feeling that he takes a responsibility and motivate perhaps the employees do not look at it in the same way and that could give a uh, fruitful dialogue between the employer and the employees in the safety committee to how could you improve it. So I can highly recommend that you use this kind of tools which is already has been on the market for several years and it has been promoted. I know that it is used in Japan, I know it's been used in uh, Thailand, Vietnam. So it's both in, in, in rich countries and in poor countries. We use it in Denmark and I can highly recommend it's, it's a good tool and you do not need to develop your own tools in the Philippines. Use what is already developed by others and also try it. So the last thing I want to, to, to mention is that uh, nowadays uh, the companies are working globally and uh, at least for the Danish companies, if they should uh, import uh, goods from the Philippines or from other places in the world, to be able to market the, the things in Denmark for the consumers, it's important that the production uh, condition in where, where the goods coming from are okay. Meaning that the Danish companies, they cannot sell the goods if they're not produced in a responsible way. So if, if for example, you, 
abuse children in, in the workplace. You can def it will be very, very difficult for you to sell the goods to Denmark. And, and I know it's the same situation in the US and in the rest of Europe. So besides, it's a good business case because your production will improve if you have a good uh, OSH situation at the company. It also will improve the possibility for you to export your goods uh, to the Western world. So uh, there's so many good reasons for improving the OSH situation, both for the single worker, for the cost uh, and, and the economy of the single company and for the possibility of exporting it. I believe that's what I have to, to tell you today. I hope you can use some of my experiences from our small country. Denmark and uh, be aware that you're not the only one struggling with the OSH problems. It's all over the world and all of the countries we're struggling but we need to, to take it seriously because we will benefit from it. So thank you for inviting me and, and good luck in the future. And thank you very much Mr. Anderson for your time and for that fruitful message. This is Echo Plus amplifying your voice 2.0. Thank you, Rex. Alam mo ba, Ms. Dang, nakakatuwa naman yung sharing ni Mr. Anderson regarding sa state ng Occupational Safety and Health Compliance nila sa Denmark. Ganon din naman ang sharing ni Mr. Poserio about the challenges na kinakaharap nila sa pagsunod sa policy ng Occupational Safety and Health. Nasinagot naman ni Director Kokweko sa pagbibigay niya ng mga tips sa mga MSME para sila ay makasunod naman doon sa mga compliance requirements on Occupational Safety and Health. And with that, of course, we want to thank Mr. Anderson, Mr. Poserio, and our Executive Director, Kukweko, for their insights and wisdom. The next segment of our program will feature another question from a netizen. So, Ms. Dang, no, this time, ang kanyang concern naman ay sinen sa ating ECO Facebook page. But before we proceed to the next segment of ECO Plus 2.0 Amplifying Public Service, let us have a short break. The Employers' Confederation of the Philippines offers training programs on industrial relations, occupational safety and health, management and employee development, human resources, and entrepreneurship development. The industrial relations programs cover labor laws, dialogue mechanisms, administrative investigations, and grievance handling. The occupational safety and health programs ensure safe and healthy workplaces in accordance with laws and good practices. The management development programs help companies manage tasks and people in the context of the fast-changing business environment. The employee development programs foster agility among workers through soft skills for survival and sustainability. The HR programs enable practitioners to build smarter organization and enhance employee-employer relationships. The entrepreneurship development programs help aspiring and existing small business entrepreneurs start or expand their businesses. ECOP trainers and consultants come from different sectors, academe, business, and government who are experts and seasoned practitioners in their respective fields. Because of the disruption caused by the COVID-19 pandemic, the ECOP training and development department shifted its public programs online using the Zoom lectures and complemented with online exercises and case studies. To our in-house programs, ECOP works closely with our client companies in the design and execution of a training intervention to suit its specific requirements. The ECOP eCampus is a learning management system where participants can learn anywhere and anytime at their own pace. It enables ECOP to offer courses and programs either in fully online or blended approach formats. It is a repository of learning materials, pre-recorded videos, exercises, quizzes, and evaluation tools. Through the eCampus, participants can also interact with the resource persons, 
and other participants that retrieve their certificates. Both ECOP members and non-members may access our training services. ECOP members are entitled to free slots in some of our training programs and enjoy substantial discounts on the registration fees in all courses. To learn more about our training programs, visit www.ecop.org.ph or email us at ecoptnd at gmail.com. We are now in ECO Plus, amplifying public service segment of the show. In this segment, layunin po namin i-feature at tulungang bigyang solusyon ang isang problema na kinakaharap na isa sa ating mga ka-ECO. So, Ms. Dang, may sulat tayo today na galing kay Joseph na may ari na isang maliit na junk shop na kung saan gusto niya rin magkaroon ng OSH program. So, umpisahan natin basahin. Dear ECO, ako po si Joseph, 45 years old, may ari ng isang maliit na junk shop dito sa Marikina. Mahigit tatlong taon na rin po ay itong shop namin at kasalukuyan pong nagtatrabaho sa akin ang tatlo sa mga pamaking ko at sila po ang tumutulong sa akin sa junk shop. Medyo malaki po ang aming subdivision kaya hindi lamang ako ang may business na ganito sa amin. Sa katunayan nga po ay may pinsan din ako may ari ng junk shop dito sa amin. Tulad ko ay maliit lamang ang shop niya na una lamang siya ng ilang taon sa akin. Dumudulog po ako sa Eko dahil ka makailan lamang ay napuntahan po ang junk shop ng pinsan ko ng mga inspektor galing sa Dole. Bilang maliit na negosyo, hindi po naging gaano handa ang pinsan ko sa mga hinahanap sa kanila ng inspektor. Sila raw po ay hinahanapan ng first aider at mga programang related sa OSH. Dahil dito, nais ko po sanang lumapit sa inyo upang humingi ng payo sa Eko. Kung sakaling ako ay mapupuntahan din ng labor inspector. Hindi po ako masyadong maalam sa mga patakaran ng OSH, kaya naman sana ay matulungan ninyo ako kung paano ako magsisimulang gumawa ng mga OSH programs sa aking maliit na negosyo. Saan po ba ako magsisimula at kanina po kaya ako maaaring lumapit para makapag-training sa ganitong issue? Ano pong mga programa sa OSH ang dapat mayroon ako upang maging handa ako sa inspection? Sana ay matulungan ninyo ako at mapili po itong letter ko. Maraming salamat po sa inyo. Maraming salamat sa iyong mga tanong, Joseph. At very timely ang iyong mga katanungan. And I'm sure marami sa ating MSME owner na nanonood ngayon ang nakarelate sa iyong situation. Dahil marami rin sa kanila, nakagaya mo, nangangailangan ng guidance sa pagsisimula ng occupational safety and health sa kanilang mga workplaces. Fortunately, kasama natin muli ang Executive Director ng Occupational Safety and Health Center na sa Director Tesco Cueco na makakasagot sa mga katanungan ni Joseph at ng iba pang NSME owners na nais ding maging compliant sa health and safety standards ng bansa. Uh, salamat, Christy and Dang. Ano? Ang kalaga ng safety and health sa maliliit na kumpanya ay napaka-importante. Kasi ang unang-una, dapat nandun yung kaalaman ng bawat may-ari ng isang establishment kay maliit, malaki, na ang kaligtasan at kalusugan ng kanilang manggagawa at sila na rin, dahil sila ay manggagawa, lalo na sa maliliit, ay kailangan bantayan. Hindi ka mga katrabaho nang may sakit, hindi ka lalo makakatrabaho kung naaksidente ka. Ngayon, sa tingin natin, itong maliliit na lugar na yan, maraming mga panganib yan. Sabi ko nga, maski sa tingin natin, nagtitinda lang yan, o may mga ginagawang ma paang araw-araw, ito ay nakakadulot din ng mga pwedeng mga sakit, mga aksidente, 
o pwede rin itong source ng isang sakuna na ayon natin mangyari. So, kailangan maproteksyonan natin yung mga manggagawa natin. Alam nila, unang-una, kung ano yung mga panganib na nakaharap sa kanila. Kaya, no, nagtatrabaho sila sa mainit na lugar. Kasi itong mainit na lugar, pwede silang ma-dehydrate. Pag na-dehydrate, pwede silang mahilo, pwede mag-collapse, pwede magkaroon ng heat stroke, ayaw natin itong mga to. Yung mga nagbubuhat, yung sakit sa katawan, araw-araw nilang nararamdaman yon Pag binibigyan din natin ng lunas ng panandalian araw-araw, nakakapekto din yan sa kalusugan natin itong gamot at lalo na may mga pamamaraan tayo sa tamang pagbuhat para hindi ganon magkakasakit sa katawan nila. At ito, talagang kailangan nilang gawin araw-araw dahil gusto natin na nababantayan na, na ang kanilang kaligtasan at kalusugan ay importante na matutuloy ang pagtatrabaho nila sa habang panahon na hindi sila nagkakaroon ng sakit o sakuna sa trabaho. Parati natin sasabi, eh wala naman, meron ho yan. Pagtitingnan nyo at ang mahirap pa nga dito, pag hindi nyo nababantayan itong mga malugar na to na maliliit, pwede ho magkaroon ng sunog. At ang mga kadahilanan ay nakakalimutan natin yung mga importansya electrical safety, yung mga equipment natin na papabayaan, hindi na maintain, yan ho ay kailangan natin tingnan maigi. Kasi ito ho ang magiging cause ng isang mga insidente na ayon natin mangyari. Now, pumunta na tayo dito no, sa problema ni Joseph. Uh, may inspector na tumingin doon sa kanyang junk shop. Talagang nasa mandato po talaga ng Department of Labor na tumitingin sa lahat ng enterprises. Hindi lang malaki, kundi din sa mga maliliit. Pero ang sinasabi nga ho natin, ang pagpunta naman ng inspector ay hindi naman para i-penalize o sabihin may violation ka, ito ang penalty. Kung hindi, dapat bigyan ng tamang informasyon. So, yung hinahanap nilang first aider, may mga training po yan sa Occupational Safety and Health Center makakatulong ho kami para bigyan sila ng i-refer namin kung sino nagte-train. Pero even more than that, sana nandun ho yung uh, awareness ng safety officer. Kung ang, ang iniisip yung pagbabayad dito, ang, ang, safe, ang OSHC ho, libre ho ang mga binibigay namin mga training dito sa mga awareness, yung tatawag namin safety officer level 1 ng micro para lahat ho makakaroon nitong tamang kaalaman. Yung sa first aiders, ito rin ho ay ginagawa na rin namin ng paraan. We are trying to network now dito sa mga accredited first aid training providers na makakapagbigay din ng tamang first aid training. At tinitignan din namin ano, kung paano pang hindi maka- magiging pabigat itong mga requirements ng bata. Sinasabi kasi dapat may first aider. Pero ang tinitignan namin, kung meron naman sanang first aider na tumitingin na sa maraming maliliit na mga kumpanya na magkakadikit, dito namin tinitingnan na pwede nang sila na ang pwedeng first aider para dito sa mga new nakakluster na workplaces na yon. But again, this is a policy that we are also studying so that we can facilitate. We It is not going to be a burden to the companies who need to, eh, kasi ang existence ay para magbigay yung ay, ay may trabaho magkaroon ng maging productive may kumpanyang silang kailangan ituloy ang pagtatrabaho doon eh ayun naman ho natin may pabigat pang mga requirement pero kailangan ho ito kasi kailangan din natin maproteksyonan yung ating mga manggagawa so in terms of policies tinitingnan din namin po paano ma-improve paano rin makatulong sa lahat ng mga workplaces lalo na yung mga maliliit. So, kung may kailangan pang ano, si Joseph, pumunta na lang sa amin sa Occupational Safety and Health Center. Tumuloy ka lang sa amin dito sa Agham and North Avenue, Joseph, at tingnan natin kung ano pang mga kailangan po para makatulong kami sa inyo. At sa lahat ng mga katulad ni Joseph, please do not hesitate to approach the Occupational Safety and Health Center and the DOLE. Thank you very much, Director Tess, for sharing with us your expertise on occupational safety and health. And totoo yan, Cristino. Maraming mga programa ang gobyerno natin na maaring tumugon sa mga occupational safety and health na pangangailangan ng ating mga MSMEs. At hindi lamang yun, Ms. Dang, no? Meron din mga pribadong sektor na pwede tumulong sa kanila para matulungan sila na makapag-training at lumawa ang kanilang kaalaman regarding sa OSH programs. And with that, 
Isa na namang pong kaekop ang ating natulungan with the help of our friends from the government. Muli, maraming salamat po sa inyo. At ito po ang public service segment. Maraming salamat din, Joseph, sa pagpapadala ng iyong sulat at naway nasagot namin ang iyong mga katanungan. Iniimbitahan po namin kayo mga kaeko na ipadala sa amin ang iyong mga concern para kami po ay makapagbigay ng tulong sa inyo at nang sa ganon, may features din po namin kayo sa aming mga susunod na episodes. Upang ipadala ang inyong mga kwento, mag-send damang po kayo ng email sa helpdesk at ecop.org.ph o mag-send ng message sa aming mga Facebook page na makikita ninyo sa inyong mga screen. Let us now take a short break before the Echo Plus testimonials. Employers' Confederation of the Philippines believes that our employees are the most valuable asset and investment for any organization. Workplace illnesses, injury, or death translate to substantial costs on business with negative impact on the economy. Thus, it is only right to give priority attention and importance to our employees' safety and health. With this, ECOP launched its Occupational Safety and Health Academy to implement intervention to promote a culture of compliance with OSH laws, regulations, and standards. The OSH Academy offers a comprehensive range of services. We offer workplace risk assessment to certain gaps in compliance to laws and regulations. We design remediation program to assess non-conformances. We offer public or in-house training to capacitate personnel on the law and practice related to OSH, such as the 40R Basic Occupational Safety and Health Training mandated by the Department of Labor and Employment, the 8R Mandatory OSH Training for all employees of enterprises, the 24R Training of the Trainers as mandated by DOLE, the Training on Maternal and Child Health, Healthy Lifestyle, mental health, HIV and AIDS, TV in the workplace, and the drug-free workplace. We also offer technical assistance in the formulation of corporate policies and installation of program on OSH as required by the law and consultancy and advisory services on the challenging aspects of compliance. We have been accredited by the International Labor Organization Training Center in Turin, Italy, to conduct the Essentials of Occupational Safety and Health EOSH program. The EOSH training package is a suite of 29 modules covering a selection of themes and topics that promote a general culture of health and safety at the workplace, as well as the specific risks and issues on OSH. The package features a modular approach whereby users can select among the 29 modules and create the course that best suits their need. To learn more about our Occupational Safety and Health Academy, visit our website, ecop.org.ph or email us at ecoptnd at gmail.com. Thank you! Again, to Echo Plus, a defying voice 2.0. Our next segment, Echo Plus Testimonials, features sharing and insights from companies on their experiences being an Echo member. And for tonight, Christy, we will hear from Ms. Clarin Tobias. Ms. Clarin Tobias is the president of Zemo Outsource Solution Incorporated. <music> I'm 
Clarine C. Tobias. I'm the president of ECOC Decol. And my business is Zemo Outsource Solutions Incorporated. And I've been a member of ECOC since 2010. Azimo Outsource Solution handles management services for MSME. Usually, the micro enterprises or the small enterprises doesn't have an HR department. So they usually get our services to outsource their uh, HR services for their employees. We became compliant with the labor standard and we were also updated uh, with the labor laws and news. And we formed partnerships, especially with the Department of Labor and Employment. And last but not least, uh, we learned to handle uh, employee concerns. <music> Members are capacitated through trainings. And uh, we were able to save uh, money for the fees because some of the trainings of ECOP is either free or you get 50% discount. And also the problems regarding our labor issues are easily resolved. I think ECOP should build a holistic project, which means it, it will not stop from capacitating or for, from the training. We should, we should also put some linkages or create linkages with the financial institutions and also up to the market access. very much, Ms. Clarine Tobias. And well taken po, Mami, yung mga suggestion nyo on how to improve our services. So, mag-member na po kayo ng ECO. To our viewers, please visit our website at www.ecop.org.ph to learn more about how to become a member of ECO. And you can also browse through our roster of training programs on IR, HR, OSH, and RBC, and among others. Our social media pages are also open for your other inquiries. Interested in getting familiar with the single and official voice of Philippine employers? Want to stay updated on the latest news and trends on labor and social policy issues? By becoming a member of ECOP, you can have access to all of these and many more. Explore the benefits of joining a COP. ECOP provides its members with a comprehensive range of services that includes training, advocacy, and information through seminars, research publications, and networking. The ECOP Help Desk provides assistance to members who may have questions or concerns on issues regarding human resource management, HRM, industrial relations, IR, and occupational safety and health, OSH managed and operated internally using ECOP facilities and technical staff, the help desk can be easily accessed through multiple platforms. We regularly conduct free webinars to keep our constituents in the business community abreast with the latest and upcoming developments on industrial relations, social policies, and related topics. Aside from free webinars, we offer to members big discounts in our public training programs, seminars, and workshops on IR, HR, OSH, and a lot more. Philippine employers are represented by ECOP in various tripartite bodies. ECOP's participation in congressional hearings and other policy consultations ensures that the voice of employers is articulated, heard and acted upon. As a member, you can network and join events that bring together company representatives to discuss developments and issues on industrial relations and human resources management through our members' general meeting, MGM. Aside from this, you can attend, discover ECOP, an interactive forum organized for members and non-members alike to familiarize them with ECOP's advocacies, activities, and programs. An overview of pending labor bills in Congress and proposed policy issuances discussed in the Technical Executive Committee of the Department of Labor and Employment are usually presented. 
We provide a learning and sharing platform among representatives of our member companies through our ECOP networks. ECOP Networks has three fields of specialization which are, Industrial Relations and Human Resources, IRHR, Occupational Safety and Health, OSH, and Corporate Social Responsibility and Responsible Business Conduct, CSR, RBC. As a member company, your management or HR representatives will have the opportunity to receive full overseas technical scholarship on topics such as industrial relations, human resource management, and occupational safety and health organized in Japan. ECOP also organizes the annual National Conference of Employers, where our members enjoy discounts when participating. Lastly, you will enjoy other benefits such as up-to-date, informative e-bulletin and research publications. We provide our members up-to-date and relevant news, studies and statistics gathered from reputable agencies as well as trends and practices directly collected from various industries. Our members can enjoy 50% discounts on research publications such as Corporate Compensation Survey and CBA Report free conferences, workshops, or seminars by invitation through ECOP Special Projects. Exclusive access to members-only page in the ECOP website where you can review different project tools, documents, copies of position papers, minutes of committee meeting, and loads of other records. ECOP Plus, amplifying your voice is ECOP's digital television program that airs regularly in various social media platforms. The program discusses ECOP's advocacies and programs. It also features interviews with employers, practitioners and policy makers on current, evolving and future workplace issues. Airs twice a month, 5.30 p.m., on our Facebook page and YouTube channel. As our members continue to grow their businesses, ECOP will always continue its mandate of protecting the interest and advocating the welfare of the business community. Discover the many ways you can support your business or enterprise today. Join the Employers' Confederation of the Philippines. Your partner. Your advocate. The single and official voice of Philippine employers on labor and social policy issues. And with that, Christy, tapos na po ang ating programa ngayong araw. Thank you so much po sa ating mga panauhi na sila Mr. Anderson, Mr. Poserio, Executive Director Coqueco, and Ms. Clarine sa Tobia sa pagbibigay nyo ng oras ngayong gabi. Maraming salamat, Joseph, sa iyong mga katanungan. Sana ay nasagot namin ito ng sapat at sana nakatulong din kami sa mga kwento mo sa ibang MSNEs. Once again, ECOP is here to ensure that your voices as employers are heard articulated and acted upon. ECHO promotes social dialogue, enhances engagement with employers and stakeholders, expounds on its policy positions, and tackles industrial relations issues. We are here to pave the way for you and to become responsible, sustainable, and inclusive. Mga ka -Echo, once again, we are your hosts, Chrissy Donato and Dang Snyder, and see you every other Mondays at 5.30 p.m. sa next episode ng... Echo Plus of the Fire Boys 2.0. Keep safe and God bless everyone.